Hi everyone, Melanie here from Sweeping Black Orchid with part two of the uh, spoken tutorial for Tati's baby. Uh, let me again just kind of show you the picture. The first tutorial was talking about the supporting structures underneath and uh, now we're going to actually talk about what it takes to carve the cake um, and get this shape because of course as we all know as decorators there's no pan out there in the shape of a Volkswagen bug at least uh, not that I know of. Um, okay, uh, just quickly to note again the, the um, this cake is about 14 inches long and about eight inches wide so um, we literally just used stainless steel bowls to get the shape of this cake we did a little cheating um, instead of using um, stacked cakes so that we didn't have to do a lot of carving um, with that here are our stainless steel bowls hopefully you can get a nice view this is about a 10 inch stainless steel bowl and this is about a eight inch stainless steel bowl Okay, and these are big, but remember, once we kind of take away from one of them and push them together, you've got um, a smaller the cake. Of course, is not this wide. It, it, we'll show you how to push those together and get um, get the right uh, overall structure. Um, one thing to know when you're cooking with bowls this deep, um, sometimes you know people want to use their Pyrex glass. That's okay, but we never want to risk uh, uh, the the glass is shattering. So of course we go with the stainless steel. You want to coat these just like you would a regular cake pan. Um, using if you're using your uh, nonstick sprays or if you're using your old school flour shortening and a flour method, whatever you do, you want to coat them um, from top to bottom just like you normally would. And it's very important. You cannot cook a, a cake in a pan like this without using a heating core. You just will not get the cake cooked all the way through evenly. So for those of you who are familiar, you know that this is the Handy Dandy Heating Core. Um, if you don't have one, you can get these at your local cake supply stores, or and many times you can get them at your local uh, craft stores as well. So these go for, if you've never used them before, you're just going to literally put it, you're going to coat this with your uh, nonstick coating just like you would your pan important to coat the inside as well as the outside of course when we've had some long days and nights here in in the studio if you forget to coat that inside you can't get the cake out so you want to just put that set that down in the um inside just like you would okay and you're going to use this on your larger pan you're also going to want to use this believe it or not on your smaller pan because these are just really thick cakes and of course what this does if you're not familiar with this kind of technology is this allows the inside and remember back to your um your chemistry classes this allows the heat to conduct all the way through the, the center of the cake so that it can cook at the same speed that the outsides cook so that you don't have a burned rim and still kind of a soggy drippy uh, inside of your cake so you're going to use your heating cores on both of these okay now once you've cooked your cake, and I apologize for not having a, a real cake here, um, it's always hard when we're doing past cakes, you want to tort this just like you would a regular cake. Use your level, leveler and tort it, lift off the top, frost the inside, and of course put your cake top back on, on it. Do that for both of your levels. And then you want to take these cakes once they're completed and you want to refrigerate them. You don't want to chill them, you want them completely, completely refrigerated, not frozen. We never want a frozen cake. You're going to put this in a very uh, cool refrigerator and you're going to leave it in there for a minimum probably of five to six hours so the cake can get through and through cold. Um, even though the larger cake doesn't require much sculpting, the smaller cake we literally have to cut half of it out so that it can fit um, up next to the, the larger cake to, so that um, you can get the overall car, car structure. So now let's go back again and look at the picture. Now again you're thinking very architecturally, very a uh, car engineer. This is the larger pan, and of course this is the smaller pan. So now if you'll remember back in um, our first part of the tutorial supports, this is what we cut our support board out um, that goes underneath the cake to look like. We literally just, in your mind, <clears throat> cut that, cut the bill portion, which we'll call, off away from the cake, and that's how you're going to carve the smaller uh, cake. That's all the carving you have to do on this cake, believe it or not. So take this smaller bowl and this is again somewhat hard to envision if you, you can't see it happening in front of you so at the end of course we'll provide information for you to get in touch with us if this is not clear but you're just a top-down view bird's eye view you're going to cut this cake the smaller pan into this shape so it's round you're literally just going to cut the moon shape out and remove it and this is the part that you're going to have left that when turned to the side properly is going to butt up against the larger cake to be serve as the hood of the cake okay and then you'll finesse it and carve it a little to get it to fit 
comfortably right up against that larger cake. And that is really all the sculpting that you have to do for this cake. That's indeed why we use the stainless steel bowls um, so that there was a minimum amount of um, <clears throat> carving that necessary. Of course, when you're carving, you know by now, You've got to use a nice, heavy, dense cake. Um, so you don't want to just go out. If you're uh, a novel, if you're just really kind of a starting learning how to do cakes, you don't want to just get a box cake. Uh, do some research on the different uh, websites and get a really thick, nice, dense cake. Um, there is nothing worse than a cake collapsing under the weight of fondant if it's not the right weight. You always want to make sure that you're using a very, very sharp, uh, serrated edge knife when you're carving and make sure that your cake is not room temperature or is not um, warm, certainly not warm. You want it to be cold. Not frozen, but cold. Okay, so sculpt that piece out, stick those cakes together, and then you're ready to go on and do the rest of your decorating. Okay, so if you guys have any other questions about how we actually achieved uh, that particular shape, give us a call. Um, let me take a moment here to talk to you about making this cake a little bit larger. If you're going to make this cake um, any bigger than the dimensions that we have here, you're going to need to go to just your regular round um, cake pans. You're going to stack them up. You're probably going to need at least three double levels. So you'll have one cake, double level, two cakes with the board underneath, double level, three cakes with the board underneath, if that makes sense. And then, of course, you're going to sculpt it round. Um, you, you start with that. You can, if you want to, you can use uh, three of the same shaped pans. I mean, three levels of the same shape, or you can go with a smaller cake, a medium cake, and a larger cake so that you don't have as much to cut. Either way, and then of course you'll do the same thing, maybe just two levels uh, for the hood section and then use the same technique as far as getting them all carved out and then put it underneath the cake. If you are indeed going with a larger cake, this, um, when we talked about the support system that goes underneath, <clears throat> You're going to want to um, refer back to that piece that would look like the, of course, I lost it on my test, lovely. Um, but you're going to want to go back to that piece and think about um, cutting out, probably on your regular cardboard that you use to um, create your regular cakes, cut a piece out like this so that you can put it underneath the smaller cake that you're carving so that you can have a little more structure when you're carving it. And then when you're finished with it, a little more support, I should say, when you're carving it, and then when you're finished with it, you can use a cake lifter, lift it off, and then bump it up next to the larger cake if that makes sense for you okay that's it folks um, thank you so much again hopefully this is a helpful tutorial for Tati's baby um, and if not feel free to reach us at info at sweetthingblackorchid.com or you can give us a call at 301-351-8042 and of course we have a brand new uh, fan page at Sweet Thing Black Orchid um, on Facebook and we'd love to have you thank you so much and take care